Uh, we are called the Urban Indigenous Education Center, formerly known as the Aboriginal Education Center. We are a central department within the TDSB. And uh, we offer a wide range of services for First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students and families. We are also committed to ensuring Indigenous students uh, have success and support them throughout the TDSB uh, in their education as well as their personal lives with wraparound supports. We strive to create more culturally safe, in inclusive, and trauma-informed learning environments uh, that enrich the education of all students as Indigenous education is for all by promoting uh, centering Indigenous perspectives and by providing support and guidance to staff who work with Indigenous students. And uh, we have a number of areas that uh, we uh, work through the board throughout and that is professional learning for all staff. Uh, community engagement, um, centering uh, student voice, Indigenous student voice, as well as partnerships both internally and externally with other community organizations. Our programming is quite extensive and we also do research and development. We also vet resources and are involved in the Ministry of Education initiatives through curriculum development as well as curriculum resource development and a lot of our work is informed by the Urban Aboriginal Education Project uh, which was a project uh, that the Ministry of Education funded to three urban boards including the Toronto District School Board looking at Indigenous education within the TDSB and from that a report was developed called Decolonizing Our Schools, Aboriginal Education in the Toronto District School Board. And uh, this was done by Dr. Susan Dion through the uh, partnership with uh, York University. Uh, Dr. Susan Dion is an Indigenous professor and researcher. Um, this does inform our work as we continue to move forward. Uh, we also work very closely with the Aboriginal Community Advisory Committee. We have an Indigenous Steering Council as well as a Council of Elders uh, that we work very closely with. In terms of uh, governance, uh, we are working towards a parallel system of governance that fulfills the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada Calls to Action, and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. With regard to the TRC Calls to Action, I'd like to further reiterate that the TRC has 10 principles of reconciliation and the 94 calls to action and the 46 articles of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples that this is really the instrument of reconciliation. And so the first principle of reconciliation confirms that the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is the framework for reconciliation for all sectors of Canadian society, including education. The other nine principles serve as guides to assist in repairing the damaged relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples in Canada. The calls to action are an appeal to mobilize all levels of government organizations as well as individuals to make concrete changes in society. They list specific actions to redress the legacy of residential schools and advance the process of Canadian re reconciliation. The United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is a framework for the establishment and maintenance of mutually respectful relationships. It represents the minimum standard of the survival and dignity and well-being of Indigenous peoples. And we hope to go beyond the minimum standard, obviously. And our hope is that having all these documents together will enhance knowledge and understanding that lays the groundwork for reconciliation. With regard to the Urban Indigenous Education Centre, uh, we do provide uh, student support as everything that we do undergirds student achievement and well-being.
Uh, right now we are committed to having staff development for all uh, 37,000 employees. Uh, we have a staff of 16 people and they include the teaching and learning as well as community liaisons and student success teachers and uh, social workers, indigenous social workers and uh, child and youth counselors. We provide leadership in fostering Indigenous education in the development and implementation of culturally relevant and culturally safe uh, programs and services, and we work collaboratively with both internal and external partners to position the board as a leader in urban Indigenous education. Uh, professional learning is for all staff is designed to ensure that authentic First Nations, Métis, and Inuit perspectives are a part of all classrooms and schools, benefiting both Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. Our community engagements are vibrant and represent diverse Indigenous communities, as Toronto has the highest population of Indigenous peoples in all of Ontario combined. Uh, we are very unique within the urban construct as we are incredibly diverse. The Aboriginal Education Centre, the Urban Indigenous Education Centre, works very closely with uh, community organizations, Indigenous community organizations, and we sit on many advisory boards to enhance Indigenous education throughout the GTA, strengthening relationships based on reciprocity and respect and rep responsibility. Uh, we do hold uh, a number of uh, community events uh, throughout the GTA that brings uh, community members together in celebration of indigeneity and our achievements and accomplishments and contributions. Through this, we are able to identify and address educational issues and our concerns that may impact our communities and families. We also liaise with external partners, including the City of Toronto, the Ministry of Education, colleges and universities, and appropriate community agencies to collectively broaden the impact of Indigenous education and programs and initiatives. Okay, thank you, Tanya. What, in your opinion, makes it an example of excellence in Indigenous education? Indigenous education, it's important to center the voices of Indigenous peoples in terms of leadership in the path of uh, reconciliation. Uh, to enact the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls to action. Uh, within Ontario, there is mandatory curriculum around Action 62 and 63, and to implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples as a framework for reconcil reconciliation, understanding that we are still very much uh, within a colonial construct, um, within systems of public education, and thereby we need to be able to identify the barriers that continue to marginalize, harm, and silence Indigenous peoples, and dismantle the barriers that oppress uh, Indigenous peoples, whether it's um, recruitment and hiring and mobility within the organization, and uh, have uh, a very strong protocol around accountability and transparency, as well as working with and learning from Indigenous peoples, being led by Indigenous peoples, uh, because all the decisions that are being made have huge impacts within our communities that uh, support uh, indigenous uh, student success and well-being and achievement. So in continuing with that particular question, in looking at what contributes to the efficacy of indigenous education, I would like to also say that it is important that indigenous knowledge is centered and what is the contribution of indigenous knowledge, how can that be used in reconciliation through policy making, uh, I think is critical in terms of uh, moving forward and uh, enacting Indigenous uh, practices and principles within uh, respectful engagement and protocols. 
So consulting and collaborating with Indigenous peoples with free, prior, and informed consent to use the, uh, the statement, nothing about us without us. Also, when we're talking about research and data collection, adhering to the principles of OCAP, ownership, control, access, and possession um, with regard to that, and really focusing on restorative practices and uh, practices that not only uh, restore but are about uh, reparation when we further the discussion around reconciliation. And uh, we need uh, Indigenous student leadership. We also need Indigenous trustees. We need Indigenous peoples in higher levels within public education, at the superintendent level, at the executive superintendent level. We need to to be able to mobilize Indigenous peoples into those um, structures of governance as they exist now and also to an adopt an approach to Indigenous education that puts Indigenous student and well-being at the center and provide those opportunities for Indigenous student leadership. And all of this affirms and respects and promotes Indigenous peoples and Indigenous knowledge and also to recognize and affirm treaty rights, Indigenous rights and the revitalization of Indigenous languages that also uh, support the development and implementation of Indigenous knowledges and looking at innovations in education, um, looking at Indigenous education within the 21st century and re-envisioning ourselves as a part of that uh, conversation moving forward and also commit to and ensure measures of effectively dealing with discrimination and racism and uh, looking at and creating the context for culturally safe and trauma-informed schools through uh, professional learning and continued dialogue and uh, to provide opportunities for that professional learning. That includes the impact of colonization, both historically embedded and also contemporarily practiced as the colonial project still continues on through various areas, including uh, looking at First Nations communities, uh, for example, uh, food safety and security, environmental racism, really centering UNDRIP in terms of working with Indigenous peoples with free parent informed consent, and also uh, looking at the child welfare system in Canada and other uh, areas where Indigenous peoples are, are largely represented in, in our jails and uh, institutions, uh, but also not to position Indigenous peoples as the other or the poor, uh, pitiful other, and that really focuses on a damaged-centered construct um, because we're still here and honoring Indigenous survivance and strength, our accomplishments, our achievements, and how non-Indigenous people can learn from Indigenous peoples as the way forward, centering Indigenous knowledge and thinking about sustainability and the environment, that those systems uh, come into play, which they are already in some different contexts, and uh, to continue to build respectful relationships with Indigenous peoples uh, rooted in reciprocity and participate in the decolonizing and indigenizing of our uh, public school systems and uh, to embed Indigenous education in all areas including the board action plans, the school improvement plans and to really uh, look at how Indigenous education is positioned differently from the discourse of equity. There are intersections, however, looking at nation-to-nation -nation building, uh, looking at that relationship and not embedding Indigenous education within a multicultural construct, because Indigenous peoples are the first peoples of Canada and we were never involved in confederation. However, uh, we've been uh, legislated, uh, you know, through the Indian Act and looking at those amendments, etc. There's a lot of work to do uh, ahead, and uh, we call upon all people, 
uh, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples in systems of public education to redress the harm that has been done and to move forward in a good way. How do you measure the success of your program? Uh, we measure the success of the program and, you know, not necessarily using you know, dominant Western ways of measuring, uh, would really be uh, based on um, the four R's as identified by uh, Verna Kirkness, who's an Indigenous scholar who talks about um, respect, uh, reciprocity, and relevance and responsibility, that we are working um, in a good way uh, in relationship uh, with non-Indigenous peoples to really support the needs of Indigenous peoples articulated by Indigenous peoples and Indigenous education led by Indigenous people for Indigenous peoples uh, and understanding that relationship that is also uh, a part of the two-row wampum, uh, the Gaswenta wampum, um, that really clearly articulates to that relationship in terms of creating ethical space. So um, that's more organic in terms of are those relationships working well? Are they based on mutual trust and reciprocity? And in terms of measuring success uh, is really, I would say, community engagement, um, seeing Indigenous peoples involvement in decision making and coming out to community events are, are ways of uh, seeing that uh, the, the work of the Urban Indigenous Education Center is working well, um, that we do see an increase, for example, in attendance, that we are getting the resources that we need to set Indigenous students up for success and really addressing and positioning Indigenous education in terms of uh, challenging the biases and the power and the privilege of the people working in education and understanding uh, the impact of colonization, are, I think, are very key in terms of uh, creating the potential for spaces of transformation. I would also say that uh, an increase in recruitment, hiring, and retention and mobility of Indigenous peoples within uh, systems of public schooling, particularly within the TDSB, are uh, definitely indicators of, uh, of success, as well as seeing more participants, Indigenous peoples involved in the Aboriginal Community Advisory Committee, the support of uh, trustees, the support of the uh, senior team, the support from the director to really see and articulate uh, the needs to elevate and amplify the voices of Indigenous leaders in education and uh, Indigenous uh, parents and students. Uh, an increase in uh, programming uh, that supports Indigenous students' needs, uh, for example, um, land-based learning opportunities uh, for students looking at uh, different pathways, uh, funding for students uh, in terms of uh, carrying forward into those pathways, whether they choose colleges or universities or the, the workplace, that there is a plethora of uh, choice and options. Uh, for Indigenous peoples, uh, the 21st century is changing uh, quite a bit, and we're looking at, uh, you know, the uh, technology and uh, global competencies that we are fully engaged, involved within those conversations as well. From your perspective, what is Indigenous education? Indigenous education is uh, an education that centers Indigenous knowledge, Indigenous knowledges, Indigenous voice, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, looking at Indigenous ways of knowing and being, and that it is articulated by Indigenous peoples. To me, that is what Indigenous education is. It's an education that uh, considers the whole being, the mind, the heart, the body, and the emotion.
and also centers indigenous ways of knowing and being and that works within principles and constructs of the importance of elders. Indigenous education ultimately supports the well-being of the self, the family, the community, the land, the spirits, and the ancestors. It is about a holistic education. It is reflexive, reflective, experiential, and relational. Uh, relationship is uh, paramount. Focused on connectedness, on reciprocal relationships, and a sense of place. Uh, it involves uh, um, a multi-generational construct, uh, looking at infancy to, to elders. It is cyclical. It also involves uh, generational roles and responsibilities. And also it recognizes uh, the role of Indigenous knowledge. And it embeds uh, memory and histories and stories of Indigenous peoples, by Indigenous peoples. It uh, involves patience and time and is about centering identity and addresses the harm that has been done through uh, the legacy of residential schools and the colonial construct of the public education system as it stands now. And it involves recognizing that some knowledge is sacred and is only shared with permission and or certain situations. Indigenous uh, education also involves the oral tradition. It understands the significance of balance and the interaction with community, understanding that everything is interrelated, everything is interconnected, everything is alive, and everything has a spirit, and that we continue to learn from the elders as we continue to unlearn, to relearn, to learn, and center Indigenous perspectives. There's also the importance of silence and the importance of listening in terms of ethical listening, and uh, respecting Indigenous protocol and the group process and the role of family and community and making all of these connections to the land and uh, the importance of uh, storytelling within that narrative. What is your vision for Indigenous education over the next 10 years? Well, over the next 10 years, we'd like to see a lot of creativity and innovation and we are evolving into an urban indigenous education that is like a community hub, a center for indigenous thought, indigenous practices, etc. And that it will be rooted in indigenous teachings, reflecting the diversity of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples and community, as well as being a welcoming and inclusive environment for all students, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, across the Toronto District School Board. We'd like to see increased partnerships uh, with community agencies as well as post-secondary institutes in terms of the revitalization of uh, Indigenous languages. Uh, we really would like to see um, that uh, program grow across the TDSB as well as offering other Indigenous languages and offering more Anishinaabe Mowin programs uh, for students. And that uh, this intent is combined with other various Indigenous initiatives undertaken by the board in this central urban location reflecting Indigenous pedagogy, Indigenous ways of knowing and being, and to center Indigenous voices and the broader community in creating a learning environment which will be designed to foster Indigenous knowledges, values, and cultures. And the intent will be to welcome all into the Indigenous context. Uh, we want to see an education that is worthy of... Uh, of children, Indigenous children, and all children, uh, looking at uh, also seven generations forward, and the new 
Urban Indigenous Education Center will welcome all students from K to 12 who seek a unique learning environment grounded in Indigenous ways of knowing and being, uh, where students are supported to be confident, critical thinkers, and engaged learners, and you know to provide high quality education um, and the highest expectations of success for every student as defined by Indigenous peoples and support Indigenous students in realizing their full potential through the transition to post-secondary education. To see the Urban Indigenous Education Center grow and how it will contribute to the growth of knowledge in the urban Indigenous context and uh, also uh, be dedicated to increasing cultural capacity across the board um, through the implementation of inclusive curriculum enhanced by professional learning and innovative and creative practices in promising practices uh, in Indigenous education. That we continue to support and actively engage participation by Indigenous parents and members of the diverse Indigenous communities and that it is welcoming to the community or communities and also responsive to the community's needs. Um, partnership with Indigenous um, service providers, post-secondary institutions, and arts and culture are uh, a priority, as well as looking at all subject areas across the curriculum. We would like to see a building that honors uh, these ideas that are informed by Indigenous knowledges, an environment that is uh, about healing and about celebrating who we are as Indigenous peoples. A building with lots of light, made from sustainable materials, that centers Indigenous ways of knowing being, lots of indoor-outdoor space, a place for elders, place for um, early childhood education and a place where our foods, our traditional ways of knowing and being and indigenous uh, foods are a part of the construct, a place of healing and a, and a place of celebration. What information, materials, resources do you need to achieve that vision? So aside from funding. Uh, we need to see legislative change in this country that honors the TRC and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. So that leg legislative change will also promote support from the various ministries, not only the Ministry of Education, but all ministries that have uh, influence uh, and authority in terms of Indigenous education working together to provide the best education possible for Indigenous students and create welcoming spaces in Canada to uphold the dignity of Indigenous peoples.